coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. And as beautiful as guns are, tasers are stunning. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast and every week we choose a popular saying, sometimes not so popular saying, and take an admittedly shallow, um, once in a while interesting, for lucky educational, if, uh, w- did I miss one? Educational, comedic, comedic Energy, hopefully comedic. Thorough? Thorough and slow. <laughs> uh, anyway, we we dig into the usage, its origins, its meanings, but mostly we use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation We on. love idioms. We're idiom guys. We are a couple of idioms. I hope you enjoy today's. My name is Jurassic Mark. I'm Skitty. Well, it doesn't matter really. What doesn't? Well, just life. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things that just don't matter. How much time do you obsess about stuff that just doesn't matter? Oh, man. Isn't that crazy yeah. when you really think about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or don't think about it or whatever. And then let's say you think it matters and then it happens. You're like, oh, it didn't really matter. It actually didn't really it didn't matter. Didn't There's really a matter. whole lot of things that don't really matter. I was, I was listening to, speaking of probably doesn't matter, but I was listening back to a couple of our episodes and... <laughs> I feel like I slur my words, so I'm like in my head about it, so I'm trying to enunciate Maybe you've had words. one too many brewskis, which I'm about to open one. I it's don't, a ginger brewski. I don't, I've never had a brewski. How a, about that a for, ginger how about that for info? I've never had a brewski. You know, I've been with you and you were always. I have definitely tasted a brewski. You, you've been true to, you're true to, your, true to your word on that. Tell me what you think about this. This is a brand new, as far as I know. Canada dry ginger brewski. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I, right? I love a good ginger beer. Yeah. It's got the nice spice. Yeah, I, that's the thing that always seems to be missing on new ginger beers. It's like, where's the kick? Where's the little burn in the back of my throat? Yeah, if, if it's not burning, you're not doing it right. That's what just, I'm saying. That's just ginger ale. <laughs> that is just, yeah. It's like, if it's not ginger, I mean, if it's not burning, it's not ginger beer. It's ginger ale. That's all I'm but saying. Do they have other ones like, uh, what, what's that, like ginger Guinness or something? <laughs> oh, like ginger flavored beer? Well, there's ginger ales and, and a ginger beer. Yeah, How but ginger, ginger ale is a soft drink. Well, it's an but the word ale implies that it's yeah. like a so just root beer. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> root Guinness, Doesn't and sound sa- good. same with Mike's Hard Lemonade. Like that's just juice. I, I think it's the hard part is that there's alcohol in it. Nah, there's none in there. No, it's just a fun name. There, I'm pretty sure there's alcohol. I drink them all day, <laughs> and then drive around. I've right? never felt a thing. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> So no, you got definitely a, ginger beer is, 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 is a fun drink. I'm just saying that a... We should do a three-minute video on different types of ginger beer. I was just, <laughs> just going to bring that up because there is a three minutes gone video where we sampled, what, probably 10? Yeah, it's quite a few. Different it's, ginger it's beers. and the, Ginger beers from around the world. They were around the world. There's some Australian, some Euro- European. Afterwards, European, for sure. European. Yeah. Afterwards, and that burned. I'm European. <laughs> Yeah, that's when you really know how spicy it was. No, but what I was going to say... I had that Tacos El Pastor at, from from Chipotle. Well, they're like, oh, it's spicy. And as I was having it, I was like, you know, that is a little spicy. Well, the next day it was still spicy. Oh, oh yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> I've had it before. I don't... Like, it's not the Pastor part. I don't Did know. Did you say Chipotle? Yeah, Chipotle. Limited time only. Oh, really? Yeah, it was uh, burritos, It was burrito El Pastor. And oh, so, so like, something new. Not just their burrito you can get with Pastor. No, it's like, yeah, it's on like this limited time menu. Oh, okay. I haven't tried that mm-hmm. then. Yeah. Uh, what's the other burrito place? Mucho Burrito. Yeah, that's delicious. They have a seasonal one with ghost pepper. Uh, it's a ghost pepper bacon marmalade sauce in there. What? And it melts your face off. Like it is. Sm- that's an amazing combo. Yeah. It's like sweet and burning. And it, they used to bring it out in October only for like the Day of the Dead. It's great when like meals have a little something to them, right? That's all I was going to say about ginger beer. It's just a ginger ale unless it packs a little heat. <laughs> I was going there. Yeah. I, 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 I okay, got good. there. Yeah. I didn't know who was just going to go abruptly and just say it. Well, how else? Okay. I, there must yeah, be an opening clip or let's, something. Let's get into it then. Here we go. Today's I'm always eating. packing heat. Krusty the Clown. <laughs> it's always packing heat. Packing heat. Packing heat. Yeah. Well, so when I started investigating, it turns out that it, like, so I'm like old time gangster thinking. And that's the origin story. Thank you for listening, everybody. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll get to origins and the in-depth origins like we always have and get really to the root of things like the, like the village that uh, children expect from the, the pod. Right. Um, but when I was looking, it was like not all good. 
What do you mean by that? It was like he's packing heat, and it was referring to like wieners and bits. Oh well, that that's more recent. Yeah, I was I was like, what? I've because never heard that. Because now that packing heat means well, we haven't even said packing heat means you are carrying a weapon, right? Um, but if you say he's packing heat, it could be any. And, and I was like, if it was like what? I've never heard that before, and I was kind of like startled by yeah, that. Yeah, but. It, it, it's not as bad as you think because anything weapon related, like if you said, yeah, he's got a concealed weapon. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like any weapon related term. Yeah. He's, he's licensed to kill. That's oh, for I'm sure. blacking out. I'm seeing stars he's, right now. He's licensed to kill. That's for sure. Oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh wow. Shooting blanks. Like they're all, they're all that. I guess if your mind goes, I just wasn't like, I wasn't thinking in that, that vein. That main vein of thanks. And <laughs> and it was like startling. It took me off guard. Yeah. Packing heat. It's like, what? Anyway. I didn't come across that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So uh, that me. was Krusty the Clown introducing today's idiom, which of course means carrying a weapon. It doesn't have to mean... Well, we did a whole weapons idiom series. We did. We missed this one. This was not in there. No. So when I started back in on the research, I was like... Probably should same, have included this same one. Same stuff. Yeah. 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 That's okay. And today will be, uh, well, it'll be no short, no, no shorter than usual, but its content will be shorter. <laughs> it's <laughs> not the size of the content? No. It's how you use the content. It's all about the concealed weapon. Um, so, <laughs> so different aspects of things. I, I was, so uh, packing heat, so gun, but didn't have, didn't have to be gun. Um and so he starts researching through again on, on firearms and this, this sort of thing. Some people are just into uh, guns because they're beautiful. Like it's like a piece of marveling engineering and it's a, it's a like mahogany or like the butt of the rifle or whatever. It's all Even this. just the inner workings. Is right. Good. And as beautiful as guns are, tasers are stunning. <laughs> And that's what you're going to hear before we start. That's that's going to be the clip, guaranteed. That's the clip, right there. I was hoping it was going to be this. Uh, so a friend of mine is totally getting into 3D printers, and the other day he's like, "Look at this," and he's got this software. He's like, "I could 3D print a gun." And I'm like, "Whatever. I've been printing on a Canon forever." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's that's awesome. We'll bring it out <laughs> some of the oldies from previous references. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, it's a, uh, so the one, this, this is an origins, but the one reference I, uh, about packing heat and, and it being in, uh, in print and in whatever, the one that came up the most, and you probably remember this from, I'm going to guess grade nine. Okay. Is the outsiders. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they, Stay gold. yeah, they referred to guns as heaters and they're carrying heat, packing heat. Like it's almost, it's said more often than gun in that book. Uh, fascinating how many of those guys, at least in the movie, not from the book, but those uh, guys from <laughs> that played them in the movies are all like A-list or turned into A-list celebrities. Almost all of them. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, they're big time. Yeah, um, There's some magic in the outsiders. Matt Dillon uh, is, is in there. Uh, yeah, what, he went on to Rumblefish. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Swayze. Uh, for Yeah, what's uh, Karate Kid guy? Uh, Ralph Macchio. Ralph Macchio. Yeah. Pony Boy, yep. Uh, What's his face? C. Thomas Howell. C. Thomas Howell. He went on to Soul Man. <laughs> Other, but they're maybe not A list now. But uh, they were A list. Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe. He's um, still doing it. Still looking Emilio good. Emilio Estevez. Wow. Is uh, is Charlie Sheen in that too, or just Emilio? Was Tom Cruise? No. Is wait? Yes. Tom Cruise was in. I that. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So, well, at least one of Morgan them. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Morgan. <Margaret. laughs> At least one of them. And <laughs> Mr. T, just to wrap it up. A pit of the pool doesn't pack heat. <laughs> yeah. So this, the funny thing is... How many it people took, it produced? So I think it was ninth grade. It was required reading. It's a, it's a good book. It is a good book. and But you read it one way, and then I saw the movie, and uh, the Sochas, because it's the Greasers and the Sochers. Sochas. Yeah. But when you read it, S-O-C apostrophe S... I thought it was the greasers in the socks. The whole way reading through the book, I didn't get it. Then you watch the movie, you're like, oh, oh <laughs> that makes sense. They're now. socialites. Did, Got it. Did any of them go to A-list celebrity 
That's a good question. Or is it just all the bad boys? That's good. I don't even. I don't know. I don't remember the I good guys. I can't think of a single. Yeah. Social. Who played the... Cherry? Who was the girl? <clears throat> I, I I no idea. Yeah. I don't. Marissa Tomei. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's that on the nose. But yeah, it's uh. <clears throat> so in terms of like gun culture and. That sort of uh, yeah, so, mobstery gang element. Yeah, so that's the fifties. He's back in heat, eh? Yeah, that's what we're going to get into. It's a gang. Tommy gun. <laughs> see, <laughs> he's just got to follow with C. See? It's back in heat. See, <laughs> yeah, having um, and just the that people would choose this that lifestyle over everything. It was like your gun or um, like gun trumps job, gun trumps like. What do you mean, gun trumps job? What are you saying? That like in that culture of things, like that you are thought of as a bad boy is is the pre predominant thing. It's not about sorry. Cherry's played by Diane Lane, another A list. Huh. There you go. And the good guys, Randy Anderson. Nope. Nope. Not so much. Uh. No. Nope. Oh, wait. That's the character's name. Darren Dalton. Still. Nope. Won't matter. Leaf Garrett. I know that, that sounds name. familiar. Didn't he like conquer? Like, was he adventured in North America? Yeah, I think that's who you're. Th- Leif, yeah, Leif Erikson. I think you're I thinking see. of <laughs> something like that. Oh, and there's a little girl that w- played by Sofia Coppola, as in Francis Ford. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, just that. Uh, like that being thought of in that position of power and packing heat, being like like was more than like having a job, more than holding down a, a family. It was like you, you were just like a gangster was your persona. Oh, I see what you meant. I, I thought you meant actually owning a gun trumped job. But it was the the you were you had to be more committed to the family. Yeah. Yeah. Family values. Than your family. Right. Yeah. I uh, and I could see like choosing a gun over like a, a lady. Cause you can put a silencer on a gun. I, I was waiting. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> Can't be triggered. Oh, <laughs> so that it was just such a big deal, such a part of the identity. Like, is I'd rather have gangs. a gun than a woman because it's less triggered. <laughs> uh, just you're so funny. He would never say that in real life. No, you're no, so, you're hilarious. Um, anyway, <laughs> anywho, yeah. <clears throat> this uh, sleep with it under your pillow. Yeah, there's just such a uh, like a high. Ar- um, uh, overshadowing part of one's identity for those who are in this world. Yeah, yeah. Trump's all. And and I think that there's probably a lot of folklore that goes along with it, but there's probably a reality. I mean, even like totally different. It's not the old time you see gangsters, but like modern day gangs, it's um, it's it's only one way in. It's usually not an out. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same. Even modern. Oh, day. even when you try to get out, they put you, they bring you back in. That's the, from, from the Godfather. See, see, see. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. You're never really out. See. <laughs> yeah, the <clears throat> you can't get out. No. Yeah. So you got to be. You might as well. Even do. John Wick, he got out, but they brought him back in. Sort of. Well, I haven't seen all of them. Did they bring him back in? Well, he he kind of went a little bit nuts because he, he got out. Yeah, he was out. But when he did what he did, have you seen the Beekeeper? I have. <laughs> it's, yeah. kind of, it's kind of got a similar I'm out, but you're never really out. The beekeeper, J- so Jason Statham, uh, this this kind of uh, inner society of like more CIA related level of, of government of these under like off the books, Just black trained ops, assassins kind all of thing. They do is, yeah, kill people, but all government related. And uh, but the character cast, so Jason Statham as like the beekeeper that got out. Uh, but those who are current beekeepers has a bit of like that Scott Pilgrim against the world craziness to him. It's like, and boom, minigun on the back of my truck. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, And like yeah. crazy hair. Yeah. Like, so it's like, oh, that's very, you know, Scott Pilgrim. I forgot about that movie. Yeah, where it's like every character is just so much more nuts than the next one. He's got no, he's got missing an arm and he's got a, this is this, this hook catapult device or whatever. It's just, it's always outlandishly crazy. So yeah, yeah, it's it's too Inspector Gadget. Yeah, it's like all right, a little over the top. Whereas the Beekeeper, like Jason Statham, he just wanted to. He was just hand to hand combat mostly. 
unless he got your gun off of you. The uh, the but your, that's, your that's heat. <laughs> he, he was packing heat. The no, he wasn't though. That's what I'm saying. No, he would, he'd steal your heat. He'd steal your heat. <laughs> And then he was backing. Yeah. Have we done Steal Your Thunder? Hmm. I don't think so. No. Hey, I have good news. Spe- sure. Speaking of, you I'm know, glad. maybe the next episode or how many episodes. We're coming up on 300 episodes, actually. 300. And, uh, is there a this good 300 related thing? Probably, but here's the good news. Okay. I Spartans heard and- uh, Joe Rogan interviewed. Okay. And it's like, when he started your podcast, and he interrupts and he's like, oh, it was actually just me and a bunch of buddies. We're just doing it. For fun. We enjoyed spending time together. Mm-hmm. Like, well, when did it take off? Like, you're like, oh, this is going to be... He goes, oh, we were at least five years in before anybody cared about our podcast. So that's the good news. Well, we're on year six, so... We're, are we on six? Well, 300 will be six years, would not it? Okay, well, that goes out the window then. <laughs> well, it's not going to happen for us then. It's over. <laughs> and it's funny is that some people would... That would deter them? Oh, no. <laughs> that just makes us dig in even further. <laughs> No, so it wasn't until like year 12 where those guys really started to get somewhere. They were out of idioms, but they were really great. They're just relentless. They're like warts. What do we do when we run out of idioms? They're like podcast warts. You can't get rid of them. You just can't get rid of them. Just when you think you uh, compound W'd it? No. (laughs) They came back with another one. It wasn't even an idiom. They started making their own idioms. I think they're making this stuff up. What are we going to do when we run out of idioms? Uh, so I have had it recently. Uh, oh, I wish I'd remembered which idiom it was. It was uh, my stepbrother was... Like one of ours? Yeah, no. So he had said something and it's like, huh, bet you didn't know where that came from, like where this comes from. It, he was talking about an idiom. I, I kind of do know where that one comes <laughs> from. It was one that we had done. I knew the and origin so of it. So he just said it? Yeah, it's this. He's like, Yeah. Like all disappointed, like like of course, you like know. he learned this this thing on this this amazing podcast, <laughs> and didn't know that. Yeah, I but, gotta check my Cliff, Cliff Clavin at the door sometimes when it comes to idioms because someone will say something like that. It's like, oh, yeah, actually, <laughs> well, do you know where this really comes from? Actually, they don't know where this really comes from. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> actually, that's not. A lot of websites say that's where it's from, but if you dig just a little deeper, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, down the rabbit hole. Well, packing heat. Do you remember Oregon Trail? The, the game? Sort of game? Yeah. Sort of, uh, it is a game. You've got dysentery and, and died. Okay, you really, that's accurate memory. Okay, I, I got this <clears throat> quote. You're traveling the Oregon Trail and you meet a man named Terry. You say, Terry, that's a girl's name. He pulls out his gun and shoots you. You have died from dysentery. 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 Oh. <laughs> I did not get that till you thoroughly explained it to me. And <laughs> made I, me laugh. I, I fell for that hard <laughs> for dysentery. You got, you got, you I'm got like, shot for I just said it right, and then he said it wrong. Yeah, but dysentery. Oh, that's good. And I get anyway. Yeah, that's like level ten dad joke right there. That's a deep. Oh no, the, here's a de- here's a level ten dad's joke. Okay. I buy all my guns <laughs> from a guy named T Rex. He's a small arms dealer. Pranta. <laughs> Do we use that one at the last one yes. too? <laughs> Okay, what else? I got this one. A sad bullet comes home to his family. <laughs> Just wait. Okay, wait. A sad bullet. Let me think about it. Okay, okay. A sad bullet comes home to his family. You'll probably get the punchline. I'll leave it for you to guess the okay, punchline. Okay. A sad bullet comes home to his family. Honey, you look terrible, exclaims his wife. What happened? Um, Let me add one detail. A sad bullet comes home to his family from work. I added the from work. Okay. Honey, you look terrible, exclaims his wife. What happened? I got fired. <laughs> That's it. But I'm... Ch- <laughs> uh, I was way too deep for that one. Oh, what were you saying? I was thinking like chambered or... Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, chambered? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you gotta pull back a bit. It's like when you're doing a uh, an escape room and you're so deep in the weeds and it's just so surface level. Yeah, and you're just like, oh my goodness. That? It's green. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's what the blue and yellow mm. uh, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So there you There's go. Probably anyway. four for blue and six for yellow. I don't know. Maybe they want us to add them together. Yeah, no, it's green. We did a uh, exit room for my son's birthday mm. last month, and we did um, Five Nights at Freddy themed room. Oh, the new one in New West. Yep, was it, it good? Was, it was great. We did it have like animatronics in it. Uh, short answer is no. Okay. But it was themed very well. Okay, good. And, uh, I don't know how much of the game you've played. I've played nothing, but coincidentally had just seen the movie. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay. So I knew, got some of the references a little more so. Mm. 
I watched that movie on an airplane and thought to myself, I hope this is better if you know the game. Because hmm. I don't know the game and the movie was terrible. So I asked some people who are gamers like uh, uh, Alpha Gecko. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no. It's not better. It's not better. <laughs> He's like it's all dumb, but it's a great game. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but yeah, he played. He he was at, he did the the room with us, cool. and uh, we set the record. We came out there like what? But we kind of we didn't cheat, but we got the record undeservingly because we came out and we're like, so we didn't need the fourth. Well, I don't want to give anything away. I'm gonna forget. We did. We didn't need the fourth. This and they're like, what do you mean? Yeah, you had to have the fourth that to get the laser pointer. And I'm like, the laser pointer was sitting on the on the ground. Was that's, it? That's what happened. So oh, they didn't set, reset no, the room properly. No. So he goes, you you found the laser pointer. We're like, yeah. No, but you found the laser pointer. Yes. He goes, no, no, no. We thought somebody walked home with the laser pointer. No. He goes, I had to go out and buy one today for you guys to do oh, this room. No. And he's like, where was it? And I'm like, I oh, was that like, there's a fake computer station. I'm like, it's sitting right here on the keyboard. And he's like, oh my goodness. He goes, well, here's what you would have had to do. You couldn't have done it without that. So we actually missed two things. Uh, one, okay, this is interesting. One, because we Wait found a, a laser pointer. This is an pointer. interesting conundrum. Do they grant you onto the leaderboard? For they do. Have, okay, because I was like, well, they could not. We actually said, like, oh, oh, you guys we didn't, didn't do the whole that's thing. That's what we said. We're like, or, oh, we didn't really get it. You can take us off. He goes, they, no, nope, Would they owe you fault. a discount for not resetting the room properly? Well, their version of that was... Uh, so one thing we bypassed, not because of the, like the laser pointer was we found one. So okay. we literally didn't need to do that one step. Right. The other thing was, how do I say this without spoilers, was we had to paste like a magnet thing to a wall, which would open something. Okay. But the thing that needed to be opened was open an inch already. Like, in, like, like, uh, like it was meant to be. And so... We just happened to get nosy enough to look in that one inch gap and we're like, oh, there's something there and grabbed it. But what was supposed to happen is you were triggering it and it opened wide to get your attention. But because we were so snoopy nosy, you we found it without that. It. Yeah. That's actually a funny design thing. So they said, hmm. we're going to change it because you didn't cheat there. You, it, It's there. It was there for you to grab. Right. And so their version of a discount was... You stay on the leaderboard. Those are our those are our things to work through. Well, all the glory then. You get the glory. Yeah. How fast did you end up doing it? Oh, I don't remember. Hmm. Um, number one. I remember that part. Nice. <laughs> you had forty five minutes and did it in. We had 30? fifty, I think. Oh, fifty. Okay. And yeah, there was there was ample time left. I, I actually can't remember. Hmm. That's good. Yeah, I like a good escape room. It's been a bit. Hot minute. Same. I hadn't done one in like a, a while. New York, New York minute? Yeah. In a minute. Let's not do that again. <laughs> well, um, do we actually have some origins for this thing? We should, uh, <laughs> should. We should probably get into something. I guess that's what we're actually going to be like for. basically origins and Riddlink. And we got we to gotta wrap this baby up. What do you mean? We got all day. We do have all day. But? No. There's no, there's no material left. Uh, okay. Alrighty, okay, we've already said the meaning. It means, uh, okay, let's just get into it. Heat slash heater is slang for gun. We've said that. And to pack, uh, this is interesting. I didn't even mean to dig into the etymology of the word pack, but when we say you're packing heat, you didn't, you're didn't. you not packing. It's not like you're packing going a suitcase a to go on a trip. Did it you remember the heat? Carrying. So, it, you, so the word pack even had a little bit of a history lesson where it used to, pack used to be a noun for mm. some, like a bag you carried. It still is. You're packing. But it has evolved to a verb. Like you never say you're suitcasing, hmm. but you do say you're packing. Hmm. So I just thought that was interesting. That packing can mean to carry or to hold as well. Um, it could also mean to deliver or you're hoofing something somewhere. You're packing something somewhere, that kind of thing. So packing heat means you are carrying a gun and or are ready to use said gun. It's usually said with, a, oh, you're packing heat like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm da- I'm dangerous. I've been packing heat. Yeah, yeah. So basically, hear it all the time. Is that right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't want to get uh, into it, but yeah. There's there's 
there's the etymology of the words. That's basically the end of that. And that fact that it came from more uh, 1920s, 1930s gangster land kind of verbiage terminology. Uh, the outsiders took that a little further down the road with putting it in print. Not that they were the first ones. I got a quote from 1932 here. Uh, W.R. Burnett from Silver Eagle says, he don't even pack a heater. Don't what? He don't carry a gun. Uh, and then 1942, um, L.V. Berry and M. Van Denbark uh, is just a thesaurus. Wow, got tongue-tied there. A thesaurus of slang had heat to carry a gun. So in 42, it was recorded as slang for that, most likely in use on the streets in the 20s and 30s by American gangs. And then movies and books took it down to be like something You've that's You've never used. heard of like a murder as someone who's like eating heat. Eating heat? Yeah, like he got he got shot. He's been eating heat. That's true. Yeah. Well, because... It's a heater. Because it's the gun. Been, yeah, he's been eating heat. You'd have to eat the gun. Well, the contents. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's also not a heater. So, okay, <laughs> so, gotta be so there is, that. there, so that is literally the fact that a gun that's fired quickly multiple times Gets heats up. up. Yeah. Mm. So that's all that is. Hmm. Yeah. He's been eating heat. I'm going to bring it in. And there's been a murder in What Sarai. I couldn't find he's been eating heat. is in baseball, a fast pitch is sometimes called a heater. Yep. And I'm like, did that come from the gun reference? Like, it's like a he shot, shot that like a bullet? Mm -hmm. Or was it his own thing? Like, mm. the, the smartness on your hand when you catch it as a back catcher. Ooh, mm. that was a heater. Mm. I, don't, I couldn't find any connection he there. But, in heat. But it feels like a connection. Like, because you would say, oh, he fired that one in, or he really shot that ball in there. So I feel like. <laughs> you know, we're big sports people. <laughs> he he shot really that shot ball. that ball in there. <laughs> I just feel like Color maybe it came from a gun reference more than just the fact that it's fast and he's on fire. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, that's the origin story. Yeah. Yeah. Heater, you like gun gets hot. Pack, you carry it. You're carrying a gun that gets hot. Packing You're packing heat. heat. Fair enough. <laughs> End of story. Well, let's see if we can get uh, eating heat popularized. Yeah, he was eating heat. That sounds more like, like this is terrible to... And I'm not going to joke about it, but it's suicide with a gun where oh, you put the, the revolver in your mouth, then you're eating heat. Okay. Because yeah. you put the well, actual let's not bring gun that back into the let's, actual let's heater that. in your mouth. Right. That makes sense in terms of like vernacular. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. Anyway. So let's not bring that back into popular culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or put it heat. in for the first time. Yeah. Eating heat. Yeah. It's catchy though. It is. I'll give yeah, you that. There's something there. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad, but there's something there. Although, you, don't you say you're taking heat? You, I was really taking heat for that. If you got if you got shot? No, if you get in trouble at work. Oh, man. Boss was giving me heat today. Hmm. I really took heat for that. It wasn't even my fault. In heat? <laughs> That's something different. Yeah. Hopefully, your boss doesn't ask you that. <laughs> Are you in heat right now? <laughs> uh, why? Yeah. I want to know what I was doing that <laughs> threw him off into such a way as to ask if I was in heat. <laughs> Are you in heat right now? That's a personal question. That is personal. You're going to have to refer this to HR, I think. <laughs> Which stands for heat related. Heat related. That's it. Yes. Well. Uh, yeah. So that's it. That's it. Packing heat. Packing heat. Carrying a gun. you're a little smarter pew, now pew. than uh, 25 minutes ago. <laughs> well, as this concludes, we should uh, wrap this up with some riddling. I'm positive. Let's bring the heat, baby. That my wife has been putting glue on the handles of my weapons. She denies it, but I'm sticking to my guns. <laughs> yeah, these are pretty dark. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you want to do it? Yes. Yes, I do. All right. Riddle Link is a game we like to play. It takes a two-part trivia-based question. It requires a two-part overlapping uh, answer, overlapping by sound, syllable, word, or word. So, for example, last week we left you with this one. Circular evidence that a pilot has lost... His control of his... Oh, I said it wrong. Circular evidence that a pilot has lost control makes me have paresthesia. <laughs> do you remember this? No, I do not. Circu it's only been a week. Circular evidence that a pilot has lost control makes me have paresthesia. <laughs> so circular evidence that a pilot has lost control means the plane has gone into a... Dive, nosedive. 
Spiral, death spiral. Airplane. Helicopter. Tailspin. Tailspin. And our idiom was pins and needles. Tail spins and needles. That's it. That's how you play Riddle League. It's not tailspin. No, it's not pins and needles. It is tail spins and needles. That's how you play. I got a couple for today. I've got two prepared as well. Okay, why don't you go first? Okay. <clears throat> Perfect abs and carrying guns. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, is that the whole thing? That's it. Perfect abs and carrying guns. Oh, I like it. Is it a six-pack? Wait, six-packing heat? Yep. Nice. I, for some reason, I got stuck on, like, six-shooter at the same time. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, six-pack and heat. That's how you play Riddling. That's a good one. Well, I've got short one prepared. I like, how, <laughs> I like how short the the intro was. Oh, okay, good. Like, what, what, something abs. Perfect abs and carrying guns. Like, short and sweet, America. Man. America. That's what I should have said. Uh, is it America for 200? <laughs> okay, I got one. Okay. Carrying heat in this blistering weather. Carrying heat in this blistering weather. You say carrying heat, which makes me think packing heat, except you use the same word. Oh, sorry. You're right. Uh, did I say carrying heat? You said carrying oh, heat. Carrying a gun. Okay. I don't even have heat written down. It's gun. Carrying a gun in this blistering weather. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> uh, packing heat wave. That's it. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to go a little, little further out. <laughs> we'll see where it goes because you might know, you might not know. It's a, it's a, you do if you do, if you don't, you don't. Carrying a gun with this year without a Santa Claus antagonist. Carrying a gun with this year without a Santa Claus antagonist. All right. Huh. Carrying a gun with Mother Nature's son uh, as, an al- <laughs> as an alternative. Okay. So packing heat. Oh, those who know, know. Those who know are chiming in, baby. Man. I I don't know. Okay. The character is Heat Miser. Heat Miser. You know Heat Miser. You said it. You know Heat Miser and Snow Miser. Are you sad now a little bit? Yeah, I am sad. Okay. Carrying a gun with this year without a Santa Claus antagonist. Got it. Yeah. Packing heat. Was it? Did you have a trouble coming up with riddle links for this one? I did. Cause yeah. There was usually it's like, oh, you'll know a little bit. You're like, ah, oh, it's. Yeah, I struggled too. Yeah. Gangster. Okay, I got one more though. Let's leave a dangling anything out there for everybody. Okay, village intimate children. We would love to hear from you on Instagram at the dot village dot idiom or email us the village idiom podcast at gmail dot com or whether it's the Facebook, the YouTube's or the X at three minutes gone. I'm wearing my Canucks hat today. They're playing the Oilers, and I hope that the Canucks are bringing the heat. Oh, wait, that's bringing, packing heat. I hope nobody is shot. <laughs> okay, here's the last one. Slang for being armed in this 2010 Julia Roberts movie of a traveling woman trying all sorts of food and spirituality. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot. I couldn't There's make it shorter. There's a lot in there. Let's, let's slang, look, one more time. Slang for being armed in this 2010 Julia Roberts movie of a traveling woman trying all sorts of food and spirituality. And that is three minutes gone. Do you know that one by chance? Not a chance. Okay. <laughs> nope, but I, I enjoy your enthusiasm. And that's just one of those qualities that you have. You've seen this movie. Probably. I saw it with you. Okay. Well, at work. What? Really? Yeah, I don't know why. It's not often we would do that. No, it, no, it was it was all staff thing. Okay. And the boss chose this movie. Hmm. For A Julia reason. Roberts movie? Yeah. I remember when we saw like World of Tomorrow or something like that. It was Tomorrow in the workplace, not at the theater. Oh, because we went to the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Or if we were having like a really desperate, like, Hey, man, what are you doing this afternoon? Oh, man, I'm just done. Today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go to a movie. Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Skitty. I'm Jurassic Mark. And these are the Village Idioms. Sounds good. Oh. Uh. Yeah. I'm dysentery. <laughs> Last three minutes gone.